So right now, we are in the midst of a whole lot of processing. And one of the things we're processing is uh, some of our peaches and cream sweet corn. Which, when you look in the sink here, we actually got a pretty good harvest of. Now this will be it for uh, 2021. They weren't too old or too mature, but uh, we're going to use this to make some various relishes and probably some freezing products and that sort of thing. As we kind of processed this, we were doing some talking about uh, possibly rethinking the role of corn on our uh, homestead. So corn is one of those plants that uh, anybody who's looked into seed saving, for example, kind of knows it's a really difficult one unless you live in an area pretty isolated without a lot of neighbors who grow corn. <laughs> Basically because it's wind pollinated um, your separation or isolation from other uh, corn growers is pretty big so it makes it very very difficult and that has always been an extreme deterrent for me as far as growing corn. We have grown it in the past. Our vision here is to try to be sustainable. It, sustainable, of course, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do absolutely everything yourself. Now, corn is one of those plants that uh, the benefits of raising it and what you can do with it, between what it can do to feed us, but also what it can do to feed our animals, is pretty impressive. Corn is also the epitome of plants that constantly wants to outcross. It doesn't like to inbreed, and so it doesn't play very nice in isolation, unless you're really isolated. So another positive to corn is, uh, like a lot of other vegetables, you're going to get waste. Uh, these particular cobs uh, basically had uh, corn borer in them, <laughs> so uh, they are going to the pigs. But the nice part about corn is uh, virtually the entire plant is edible, depending on the time of, uh, of harvest of it. So then the big question is, how does this fit into our plan? Well, to put it very bluntly, we are planning to... Uh, continue to grow corn because of, like I said, what it brings to us and what it brings to the animals. But to do that, we're probably going to do this on a semi, a modified semi put and take uh, basis, i.e. for us, where we're located and the growers around us. Essentially every two years, we would be in a situation to save corn seeds. Now, to keep things simple, we're going to pick a variety of corn, which is actually a hybrid, peaches and cream because we like it and it's readily available and it's easy to get and it's cheap. <laughs> All those things don't necessarily sound ultra sustainable but this would be one of those vegetables for us uh, that if we couldn't get it that would basically be the end of growing it and that is okay because it's essentially going to be one of the very few vegetables in our garden that we manage that way. Now, we are going to use a, an Ontario company uh, to get the seed, and uh, as I say, we may save seeds every two years if we get the opportunity. Uh, had such a, because corn has such a preference biologically for outcrossing, uh, we're just gonna see how that goes <laughs> and, uh, and give it a try. And of course, this seems like a stark contrast to what we normally portray, but I think the, the biggest thing here is, this is one thing that we're going to grow that we can't uh, indefinitely keep going, at least at the moment, but it still is beneficial enough to warrant growing. This is one vegetable that we're doing this way. The vast majority of everything else we grow is uh, things that we can keep the seeds ourselves. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Put and take is all right, if you try your hardest to avoid it. That's my, it's gonna be our new motto. <laughs> Put and take's okay, but try to avoid it. And uh, in this case, 
but we don't really think we can completely avoid it. And we'll go through a little bit of why we think that. Let's face it, corn has a pretty long history and corn has changed the face of uh, at least modern agriculture uh, in a lot of ways. Won't get into the weeds on that. <laughs> weeds as there's uh, lots of weeds growing amongst our corn. But yeah, corn has its place. It can provide food in the form of the cobs, the dried kernels, and the plant. These plants, which are basically just about ready to come down, are still, we've, essentially we've harvested from these plants all of the, uh, the cobs. So they're pretty much at the end of their garden life for us, but uh, they're still green. So what we're going to actually do with these is sort of slowly cut them down, maybe one a day or two a day, and feed them to the rabbits because the rabbits love it. And uh, that's just prolonging the, the use of this plant. So there you kind of have it. There's a huge reversal on my part uh, in my willingness to basically grow corn. And there's not one, but two concessions there. Because the first is, it will never, in the near future, be a truly sustainable endeavor. It's just kind of the reality of where we live. Two, it's actually a hybrid variety that we're thinking of growing. And I think this comes back to the the notion that hybrids are not necessarily bad. It's just that realization that if you're growing hybrids, you're going to be dependent on getting that consistency. You're, de you're going to be dependent on somebody else to do all the breeding for you. In the case of corn, we can't do the breeding. We can, but it's difficult. And so we're kind of looking at that as if we really can't do the, do the breeding for it. For a lot of the other things that we grow, we can do the breeding. And I think this is this corn discussion opens up a big a much, much bigger topic. When you're producing food for yourself, there's always breeding involved. And I'm still a big proponent of if you can if you can do the breeding yourself, then that's fantastic. But it doesn't mean that just because you can't do the breeding yourself, i.e. you can't maintain separation distances or keep large enough populations, etc., that you should not grow something if it's still going to be beneficial to you to grow. So our big profound thing is corn is uh, corn is going to stay and probably get ramped up and it's going to be our one hybrid <laughs> put and take plant uh, for the for the foreseeable future.